Hello, Internet! Welcome back to another episode of Super Mario Sunshine! In the last episode, we finished up collecting all the Shine Sprites we're going to be collecting for now from Gelato Beach. And I gotta say, I'm pretty glad. I was pretty close to titling the last episode Capitalism to go along with the pessimistic titles I gave to everything in Gelato Beach. But this time, I'm a bit more excited because we're going to be starting what is at least aesthetically, maybe not aesthetically, but at least in terms of vibes, my favorite level in the entire game. Let's just jump right in. Serena Beach, or Sirena Beach. It's the Italian word for siren, which is like the the creatures that are at sea and they like get people to jump overboard because their voices are so beautiful and whatever. Um, I think it's technically Sirena or Serena, but I'm going to call it Serena Beach because that's what I've called it since I was a kid. Anyway, episode one, the Manta Storm. Let's go. So I know that looks bad, but turn around and look at this skybox! This is absurdly beautiful. I mean, it gets kind of creepy towards the back, but... This is absurdly beautiful for a freaking GameCube game. I'm gonna try to tone down my language a little. I know I've said the F word a lot, and, you know, I, I will still say it, but I need to tone it down a little. This... It's it's just beautiful. Um, the Ferris wheel looks a little off, but we'll be talking about that more uh, later. Right away, we have a new type of goop. You might be thinking, what do you mean new type? It's just new colors? Look at that electricity. Of course it shocks you. This is the first instance of goop that will not simply get Mario filthy from running in it. It will actually actively hurt you for running in it, and also is just in the water without issue somehow. You don't need to clean all this, but, you know, it's a bit more of an obstacle that encourages you to clean it, with the fact that it will just hurt you instantly instead of taking a bit to do damage over time. Anyway, new location, new tourist map area, Sy Sir Serena, Sire Sy Sir Serena Beach. The gentle lapping of the sea accompanies spectacular sunsets and romantic dinners beneath starry skies. The four-star Hotel Delfino has it all. There doesn't seem to be a hotel here, so I don't know quite what the tourist map is going on about, but that's fine. Uh, you can see that there are a lot of coins for just spraying around. Um, so yes, I will say, this is another level where if you want to be really tedious, you can do the 100 coin mission. I would not actually recommend it in Serena Beach, uh, and there aren't actually 100 coins under the goop right now, but there will be a way to regenerate these coins, and that's sort of what I mean. There's also coins up on the trees and underneath all the bananas. Yeah. I'll cut ahead to when I'm done cleaning all this goop. There's not a lot of it, so it shouldn't take too long. It's actually really tricky to clean the roofs of these cabanas. <laughs> that, that was a lot. I don't think these qualify as cabanas, but they're huts, so whatever. They're huts on a beach. There we go. I've cleaned all of it. I will be honest, that was just an excuse for me to listen to this music. You got ripped off. You have to look it up yourself. Oh, please tell me my nightmare is over. You can save me. I don't know why, but you just look very, uh, capable to me. Listen, it all started around noon. This giant manta-shaped thing showed up. It was this paper-thin floating silhouette. It came and covered the hotel grounds in this electric goop. Then, oh, the horror, my beautiful hotel, my poor building. It sank in the middle of that awful ooze. Why me? Why? Now I've got the staff cleaning up, but where's my hotel? What am I supposed to do? I can't just sit back and... Ah! It's back! That gossamer ghoul! Do something! Hmm. 
the Fanta Manta, as it is called according to Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. I love that name, and it's not Toadstool Tour, it's, uh, no it is Toadstool Tour. I don't know why the second get, for some reason I thought that was a 3DS one, but it's not. It will trail goo wherever it goes. When you spray it with enough water, it will split in half, uh, and every individual time you split it in half, it will split into more halves. There's a very easy way of dealing with this, which is just sitting on the beach so you have infinite water. Um, but unless I get, like, really desperate, I think I'll try to avoid doing this that way. Uh, this thing can stack up a lot of damage on you very quickly. Uh, and I guess these things is more accurate. Uh, yeah, you can see even the small ones trail enough goop that, like, if we walk into this, it won't hurt us, apparently. So, okay, never mind. Yeah, they can trail such a thin amount that it won't even hurt you. It's just, like, it does start to pile up very quickly, as you can tell. Uh, okay. Okay. Luckily, you do have invincibility frames to an extent, but they will still bounce you around while you are invincible. Uh, I think it's time that I go look for some coins. Okay. Once you've sprayed them enough, they will all turn pink and just start chasing you. They will be homing into your location. Uh, there, Mario is racing into your home as the email for that Mario Kart tour... Not tour, but... Whatever the one with the toys on the Switch is called. Uh, there was, Nintendo sent me an email and the, the title of the email was Mario is racing into your home. And, I just think that's so funny, and I've never forgotten that email, because wow, what an email. What a title for an email. That sounds like something you see on an Amber Alert in like a horror movie. <laughs> okay, uh, they are starting to sort of, like, they're obviously not doing enough damage for me to worry. Like, I'm only on 2 HP, but this is by far the hardest boss we fought so far. That one was vanishing, and it still managed to hurt me. Uh, there is one more interesting thing about this boss, but I'm going to wait until I'm not being bombarded by it in order to actually say it. I am out of water. This is the first boss that requires water, where you're actually ever likely to run out of water. Luckily, the area does have a ton of water, but still. Uh, how many are left? It's like around ten of them. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> Normally I would do the cowardly strategy of sitting on the beach, but like, I don't know. I played that pretty reckless and I was still fine. And all the goop just instantly vanishes. Fantastic! You're amazing! You're my hero! I was just flapping my gums about getting rid of that thing. I didn't believe he'd actually do it. Hey, what is this? Is this a prank? Don't try to fool me. What? What? The hotel's back. This is just crazy. True. I'm gonna talk to a few more people around here. I don't know why, but this was a safe place when the goop fell. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> the things just fall, they glide right over everything, so... I was under the roof, so I didn't get drenched in slime. You're lucky, man. The Nokis out here weren't so lucky, and they appear to have... Oh. What's happening? I'm not the... You saw that, right? I think it's because they were in the middle of the animation and I was too far away for them to actually be doing it. But wow. Okay. That was creepy. Uh, yeah. Here's our first shine for Serena Beach. That took a while, actually. Probably just because I went around cleaning all the goop. It wouldn't have taken that long for you, at least. <laughs> Thank you.
So, as I said, there is something interesting about the Phantom Manta. The goop before the manta appears is in the shape of a manta, and the manta itself is a reference to the Stephen King novel The Shining after the Overlook Hotel is destroyed. Quote, For a moment it assumed the shape of a huge obscene manta, and then the wind seemed to catch it, to tear it and shred it like old dark paper. It fragmented, was caught in a whirling edge a whirling something of smoke. That doesn't seem right. My notes might be wrong. And a moment later, it was gone as if it had never been. This is one of my favorite references in the game, and I haven't even read The Shining. <laughs> this boss fight is also referenced in Splatoon 3. I won't spoil how, but it is. I don't particularly like Splatoon myself, but I do like the reference. Episode 2, The Hotel Lobby Secret. This is sort of an example of what I mean uh, when I talk about Gelato Beach and how underwhelming I think it is, and I'll talk about it more in a couple minutes. If I'm beginning to have doubts about this guy. We can't go in yet, can we? Yeah, that's pretty much what I figured. They probably lost our reservations or something anyway. Bro, the pessimistic attitude, come on. Stop watching Cinema Sins. To tell the truth, I was worried about what might happen. You're just sitting on the ground. <laughs> I'm utterly exhausted. Please let me rest. What's the holdup? Can I get checked in here or what? My apologies, but the hotel is currently still being prepared. We'll let you in as soon as we're able. Please be patient. These people are not paid enough for this. Holy shit. <laughs> What? We still can't go in! What's going on? Listen to me, we're not going to stand for this! No, no, no! Look, I'm sorry, so very sorry, really awfully sorry. I just work here, so I don't know anything. Please don't yell at me. Literally, he's not paid enough. Hey, um, it's Mario, right? Yeah, Mario. Listen, I, uh, have a feeling you can help me out again. See, the hotel, it's, uh, well, it's full of, uh, it's full of ghosts. So, well, could you maybe, uh, l look, just come inside, please. I can tell you're a miracle worker. Don't be so modest. Those are certainly ghosts. At this rate, I'll never get back home. Can't you do something, please, Mario? Are your colors different? He didn't- he wasn't pink out there, was he? I know the way NPCs are colored is kind of weird. They don't actually have their colors in the game's code. Uh, and they're all colored based on a parameter set by the game itself. Like, if you look at their models, they're all just grayscale, but... I don't know, I've j Maybe he was pink and it was just the lighting out there? Anyway, new enemy, Booze. Uh, you kill them by jumping on them. They turn invisible to make it a little trickier, but if you spray them, they become visible again. They're also pretty high up, so you're probably gonna hurt yourself jumping on them. Whoa! Help me! Why do you have employees in here, man? This seems unsafe. These are pink boos. When you spray them, they turn into platforms, and since the stairs are shuttered by a fire escape, or a wall to prevent people from escaping in the event of a fire, I'm gonna be honest, those seem like real things, but I don't know why they would exist. Uh, yeah, so we're just spraying pink booze in order to make platforms to get higher up in the hotel since we can't use the stairs. And I think it's pretty obvious what our goal is. This thing looks like it should be a fish, but it's a boo. This is one of my favorite secret levels for some reason. I don't know why. There's nothing particularly exciting about it, although I do like that you can combo off of those stews at the beginning in order to get up here instead of doing something fancy like a triple jump. Uh, yeah, there's even winged strolling stews in here, which 
cool. Those don't appear very often. I think this is the only level they appear in other than, uh, Kena Park. <laughs> in episodes, uh, one and three, I think? Or maybe just three. Uh, you also don't need to break all of these. That's just something I always do. This part. Okay. They love using these sand blocks in secret levels, which, I mean, I understand. They made a lot of unique blocks specifically for secret levels. Like, these sand blocks only appear in secret levels. These brick blocks only appear in one place that isn't a secret level. These watermelon blocks only appear in secret levels. These orange blocks only appear in secret levels. It's kind of weird that these levels are built this way. Like, why do these exist within this universe? But I think... I think the explanation is just Bowser Jr. has a magic paintbrush and he is dreaming up obstacle courses for Mario. And that's why they're all so annoying to new players, too. It's because they were made to be hard. There you go. Canon reason. Although that does bring up some interesting implications for a future one, but hopefully I'll have forgotten this by then. And what just happened? Okay, I mean, sure. Now I can do this uh, slightly faster. I feel like I should have made that, though. Destroying those three watermelon blocks at the very end gives you a one-up? Don't know why. They couldn't have come up with better placement for it, I guess, but... Yeah. This block is a little weird because it's hard to tell exactly where you are in its cycle if you're looking straight ahead, so you're sort of encouraged to look at it from the side. But then this, if you're looking at it from the side, you end up dying like I did before, so... Yeah, this one's a little more reliant on camera work. Why is there a stew here? <laughs> hey, man. I don't know why you were here, but I hope you're happier. I hope you're in a better place now. There we go. Nothing too hard. Just a little tricky. There we are. I just want to mention, I adore the design of the boos in Super Mario Sunshine. They look so, like, just mellow, I guess is a good word for it, and it's adorable. And I wish that that was sort of the design they went for from here on out. They sort of went back on it uh, in the same way they did for a lot of enemies. Mario Sunshine is notable for having a lot of weird designs for any of returning, like, pre-existing enemies. Koopas, Boos, uh, the Stroll and Stews have been listed in several guides as being Goombas, and I think, you know, Nintendo probably walked that back because the original Goomba design is so iconic. It's just, like, something really charming about Sunshine, I feel, is just how goofy uh, some of these, like, enemy designs are. Um, okay. Is there a red coin down here? Oh, there is. That is evil. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I kind of love that, though. They're really trying to encourage you to explore the entire level. This is a little easier with Flood. You don't have to worry as much about staying on it because you can just kind of hover over to here. And there's two left, which are on the sides of this. I don't need to worry because I don't need to step on that. And there we go. Please don't go stumbling off the edge, Mario. Thank you. You almost fell anyway, but at least you didn't just stumble off the block. That's more what I was worried about. Just grab our shine. Yahoo! All that done. We've begun exploring the haunted level of Super Mario Sunshine and my favorite level in terms of just vibe, so. Next time on Super Mario Sunshine, we're going to continue collecting shines and seeing that level. Very good use of words in the English language there, me. See you guys then. <laughs>